This video is made to give a brief overview of the manipulations involved in flash column chromatography. The technique's goal is to purify a sample mixture using a combination of stationary and mobile phases that run through a glass column. The first step is picking a solvent. Choosing a solvent system is perhaps the most crucial step as you want to ensure the desired product is separated from the impurities with minimal loss in time and product. In our lab, we select a solvent system such that the RF is about 0.3. This is done through trial and error. Next, a thin layer chromatography or TLC chamber with 5% hexane to ethyl acetate is prepared to develop plates in order to monitor and determine what product is eluding from the column. This column has an integrative frit, so there is no need to add cotton. Before adding the stationary phase, it is important to determine the volume to use, which depends on parameters like the width of the column, the kind of separation that is about to be performed, and the mass of the mixture being purified. The first thing to do is the addition of silica gel, where we highly recommend using masks and gloves in our lab. The solvent system was predetermined using previous experience and theoretical knowledge. The stationary phase is then combined with the mobile phase to make a slurry. Please note there are different ways to pack a column. In our lab, we prefer to use the slurry method as it provides a safer and easier way to introduce the silica with minimal air bubbles. After the addition of the slurry, steady airflow is passed from the top of the column, which pushes the solvent out into a container, ensuring uniformity and removing any air bubbles. Please note that the stopcock must be opened prior to this due to the increased air pressure. It is strongly recommended to stay close to the column when increasing the pressure. If needed, the airflow can always be stopped or decreased. More solvent is then added to clean off the remaining silica stuck to the walls of the column until the silica layer is uniformly compact at the line. Tapping slightly helps to even out the silica layer. Once it is even, a protective layer of autoclaved sand is added carefully as to protect the silica when the sample mixture is added. Again, some more solvent is passed until it just enters the sand layer. Then, the mixture is loaded into the column with the help of a long pasture pipette. The mixture should be as concentrated as possible while still dropping easily out of the pipette onto the sand layer. It is added in circular motions along the column walls for even distribution. The round bottom flask containing the mixture is then cleaned with small amounts of solvent to minimize losses during transfer. Using airflow, the mixture should enter the silica layer. More solvent is added to carefully clean the inner walls of the column. This washing process is repeated to ensure all the mixture has entered the silica gel bed as a concentrated band. No product should remain on the column wall. With a pasture pipette, a sufficient amount of solvent is added of about three inches in height before the rest of the solvent is poured using a funnel to the top of the bulb. This strategy is used to minimize the disturbance of the sand layer. Collection can now begin. It is important to use an airflow at which the collector can be comfortable multitasking. One needs to collect the eluent, sample each tube, visualize the TLC, and add more solvent. The column should never run dry before the end of collection. However, it is possible to remove the airflow, then close the stopcock if a short break is needed. Test tubes are now filling up, each fraction potentially collecting the desired product. The next crucial step is to identify which fractions contain the product. As mentioned earlier, we use TLC to determine the composition of the eluents or fractions. This step is done during collection and it does take some practice to coordinate it all. Due to the nature of the research in our lab, the majority of our products are fluorescent under UV light. The tubes are sampled in order of collection and checked under UV light. If the product is starting to come out, a darker spot will be observed on that TLC plate. Once a UV active spot is observed, silica plates are prepared with the fraction numbers using a pencil. For this column, every second fraction from the first active one were chosen. Fractions are then spotted on the line of the plate. 
The impure crude mixture is also spotted along them as a reference point. The same glass spotter is reused but cleaned between each spotting with a solvent like dichloromethane. Once all the spots are made, using tweezers, the TLC plate is carefully yet quickly placed in the chamber and closed. The solvent that migrates up the plate via capillary action. The compounds should also migrate depending on factors such as relative polarity. The plate is taken out and the solvent front is marked using a pencil before a final analysis. The fractions containing the desired compound are then pulled together by transferring to a round bottom flask. The solvent is evaporating using a rotary evaporator, followed by a high vacuum, which concentrates and dries the sample prior to mass determination for yields.